Hey, it's me, Tammy B, and this is the review for Scandal. All right, you guys, that's the season finale! <laughs> All right, you guys, so it's season five, episode 21, titled That's My Girl. So it was good to meet you guys. Um, I was here for it. I know that it didn't end in some jaw-dropping cliffhanger like it normally does. But it ended in a well-rounded, completed story, like a beginning to the end. For the most part, it didn't have any loose ends left open. So for me, it was still good. So I guess it went the other way. I guess finales could end two ways. It's a completed story, like the end, or it could end like, oh, what happened next? So this year, Shonda seemed to go with uh, tying up everything. So that was it you guys and um we do know that it is going to be a season six so some people were saying like oh this must be the end of the season because they didn't leave stuff open like they normally do but it has been confirmed that there is going to be a season six so this is just how this season this season ended you guys so let's get into it you guys so the episode starts off with jake the snake y'all Oh my gosh, so he's sitting down with his father-in-law to be his fiance's, uh, his fiance Vanessa daddy, and it looked like the good old boy's about to have a good old time and drink some nice little scotch, right? So Vanessa daddy talking about, you know, my father wanted a grandson so bad, so when Vanessa was born and she was a girl, at first we was like kind of blah, but when I first looked into her eyes and saw her cute little smile, oh my gosh, I could care less what my dad thinks, and I thought she was the most perfect baby ever, so it was so cute, so then he goes to say, so that's my roundabout way of telling you, Jake, that you are about to be the son that I never had, y'all, Jake handed him that scotch, you know what, I keep saying I'm gonna try scotch, I've tried it once, maybe, but now that my palate is a little bit more mature, I need to try some again, um, but anyway, well, not Jake Scotch, because <laughs> anyway, y'all, next thing you know, the daddy start having a heart attack, and instantly, I'm like, oh my God, Jake poisons the dad. So Jake was all like, look, I know you happy I'm your daddy, but I got a real daddy. <laughs> I got a real pappy. <laughs> Ro and my pappy. And Rowan think you'll be better off dead so we can uh, inherit Vanessa's $30 million. So bye. I was like, oh my gosh. So he started, you know, holding his heart and stuff and all of that. And then the daddy was like, call the ambulance. So Jake just kind of looked at him. And I was like, dang, Jake, that's messed up. You should at least pretend and be like, oh my gosh, are you okay? Like, just pretend like you care about the man. He just told you he wanted to be his son. I'm like, Jake is cold-blooded. Like, I know Papa Poe told him to kill him, but it's up to Jake how he do the killing long as he get it done, right? So I'm like, dang, Jake, like you could have at least pretend like, oh, are you okay? Or go towards the phone and walk slow like you about to look for the phone or something. But y'all, Jake let that man die slow. Even though he was coaching him to him, he was like, it's almost over. You going to be dead soon. <laughs> I was like, dang, Jake is crazy, y'all. So that was it. But Jake eventually called. And Jake Dumb, he gonna say ambulance or 911. Oh my gosh, I hope it's not too late. I need I have an emergency. Why would you say you hope it's not too late? Don't say that. You're just supposed to be like, oh my gosh, come quick, you know? But whatever, y'all. Long story show short, Jake killed his fiance's daddy. And now that the daddy is dead, his fiance Vanessa, who we didn't see at all this episode, is going to inherit $30 million. All right, so the main part of this um, episode was the VP candidate. I call it the VP Chronicles because basically everybody is running around figuring out what they're going to do or how who they're going to pick for vice president. Is that how it works? Well, no, we know that that's not how it works. Because I was like, why is everybody scrounging at the last minute for a vice president? That was kind of weird to me. Um... So, yeah, Pope and Associates interviewing guys for Millie. They interviewed three guys. All of them are, uh, they have to have the three M's, married, military. What was the third M? Oh, a man. 
a man married in military. So they interviewed three guys. All of them was good. The guy they liked the most, he was like, here go my secret. I'm just keep it real with you. When I was in college, I sold coke. I used it to pay off my student loans. There's only one person who know. But I'm just telling you up front. So boom, there you go. So they all liked him. So they, uh, Pope and Associates, basically Huck and Quinn, went to the guy who knew and was like, look, you know, oh boy, so coke, and he about to be our vice president, so we gonna pay you to move to Albuquerque and start your life over. Oh boy was like, look, I don't have nothing to do with that. I ain't mentioned it all this time. I don't care about that. I'm not moving to Albuquerque. But next thing you know, oh boy, in Albuquerque. So I guess they gave him a sweet deal. But I don't know, to me, that was dumb. I didn't really like that. The, but the guy ain't told all this time. But hey, I know once your friend become president, hey, you can't trust nobody or vice president or but when they become famous, you can't really trust people around you. So I get it. But he could tell from Albuquerque, he's going to be the vice president of the whole United States. I could see if they sent him to a different country. And then why don't they just pay him to be quiet and sign this confidentiality agreement? Like why uproot them guys seem like they weren't friends in a long time anyway. So that part was dumb to me, but I guess. Um, so Papa Pope, y'all, Papa Pope go to Vargas and tell him that, hey, I'll give you some money if you put Jake Ballard on your ticket. So Cyrus walked in. So, of course, Cyrus and Papa Pope pretended like they didn't know each other. Uh, when uh, Vargas left, Cyrus was like, you ain't wanted here. Papa Pope was like, if I went, uh, if I only went places I was wanted, I would never be anywhere. I was rolling. I was like, yeah, that's a good thing to live by because child, please, people be hating like it ain't nothing. Um, but yeah, so, you know, Vargas is here for it. They look up Jake Ballard, Jake, well, at least, of course, Cyrus already know Jake Ballard, but Vargas look up Jake Ballard and think, hey, he cool, so it seemed like they gonna go to Jake Ballard, so Cyrus go to Olivia, like, look, your daddy trying to steal my campaign, I think Vargas is a good guy, and I want him to win, but I don't want him to get involved with your daddy, because we all know your daddy crazy, and he gonna be running stuff, so now I don't know what to do, Olivia was like, bye, I ain't got time for you, and da, 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 da. and she was like, well, why don't you just like push him to the side? What does he have over you? So Cyrus had to admit to Olivia that he orchestrated that whole bomb that, you know, killed who? It killed a lot of people. And I think the vice president was one of them or whatever. So Andrew Nichols, it did something to him, and it was a lot of innocent people, so Olivia wasn't here for it, like, oh my god, you were behind that, she was like, I'm not with that, you killed innocent people, I could understand if you killed, like, Andrew Nichols himself, or something like that, I keep saying Andrew Nichols, but I can't remember if that was the guy or not, I mean, I know that's the vice president that Olivia just killed, but I can't remember who got hurt in the bomb, but... You know, so Olivia didn't really like that, so she kind of shooed him away. But at the same time, you know, Cyrus was spitting some real stuff. So, um, and you know, Millie got a dog in the fight, too. So regardless of if she helped Cyrus or not, her father trying to get Jake Ballard on the ticket does mean something. So she blows Cyrus off, but at the end of the day, you know she's thinking of a plan. So, boom, then Cyrus goes talk to David Rosen. I thought to ask David Rosen if he would be the vice president. I actually thought that was a good idea. I mean, I don't know. On one hand, I feel like, hey, you're already Department of Justice, so your position is solid enough to stay on the show. But because I like David Rosen and I didn't know where they were going to go with it, I just wanted David Rosen's position on the show to be solid. So I was here for him being vice president. But come to find out, like, that was all a plan. I don't really get Cyrus's point in asking David Rosen, even still. But hey... Cyrus asked David Rosen to be the president, but apparently it was all a game. But since David Rosen doesn't know that Cyrus is just playing, David Rosen goes and tells his ex boo Elizabeth Lord, like, hey, Cyrus, well, actually, she bogarted him, like, hey, Rosen, what you doing? And just busts into his office, like, yeah, let's talk. I was like, Elizabeth North is crazy. And so finally, David Rosen tell her, like, look, Cyrus Beam asked me, did I want to be on the Vargas campaign as vice president? So she's like, yeah, you should do it and you should bring me in too. And Rosa was like, what? You almost ruined my life. You ruined my life with my boo, Susan. I'm not your friend. I'm not bringing you in here, too. So uh, Elizabeth North was going to be like, you the only person who, uh, you think you the only person who was hurt by Susan Ross not winning? She was like, I cried a couple times. Real tears out of my eyes. I was like, I was wrong. Because <laughs> I'll be doing that. I don't know, y'all. On one hand, I'll be feeling like I'm a crybaby. 
But on one hand, I don't know why my brothers and sisters think that I am like the meanest person ever and that I don't have no sympathy for anybody. I mean, I do. But they, my mom has sympathy for everybody. Like, even people, I know, hey, even good people do bad stuff or even bad people, sometimes they don't deserve the worst in life. So it don't matter what your sob story is, my mom wants to help. For me, I'll be like, I want to help if, not that I'm the lord over who deserves what but it has to be a story where i really feel like okay that's a bad deal so sometimes my mom gives sympathy to everybody but for me i'll be like hmm she the one who decided to get pregnant by that man down the street i ain't you know something like that you know but my mom was like no you have to be nice (laughs) and then something happened bad oh some girl i don't know got homeless or something i was just like and my mom all crying and da, 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 da. so i be having to tell my mom like i cry <laughs> so this reminded me of this situation when elizabeth north was like i cried real tears from my eyes <laughs> i was like oh my god that was so funny it's getting hot in here so take off of your clothes <laughs> um so anyway i thought that was funny even though i don't like elizabeth north or whatever so then um Elizabeth North wanted to have sex with David, and David was like, nah, I don't want to have sex, but she was like, well, we gonna have sex anyway. I don't know. I don't really like her sex. It's all rough, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with rough sex, but I don't know. She's just weird to me, so, but whatever. That was uh, Cyrus and, I mean, that was Rosen and Elizabeth North, and it was also funny that, you know, David Rosen didn't want to pick Elizabeth North just because, you know, Elizabeth North made him lose his boo, but Rosen also said something and Rosen was like I thought you were a Republican why do you want to help me on a Democratic campaign and Elizabeth North was like hey I believe in education so I can go on either side and she was like although I don't believe in free education and although I believe education is useless hey (laughs) I'm for it and hey that goes with the Democrats and the Republican so I don't know you guys that was another thing that I agree with Elizabeth North on Okay, I like free stuff, don't get me wrong, especially free food, but I do be thinking sometimes it's unfair that people have to work so hard for stuff and then some people get stuff for free. And then I do also believe education uh, is like super important and I just firmly just believe that you should get an education regardless, whether you rich or poor, athlete or not, I believe you should get an education. And she was saying that too, uh, I think it would be cool if it would be free, but you know, no, it's, but it's not. So I don't know. I kind of long story short. Um, like I said, I agree with education or I think it's better to have it than to not. But sometimes it just totally sucks that some of the people who are greatly educated still end up homeless. Like, like I said, I probably said before, it's a lot of bums in my old hood who are so wise, but they still bums or like even at my job now, like, it is two people, I think even three people who have less education than me or who are in higher positions than me. So it's like I'm pro-education, but sometimes it doesn't mean anything. So I see where Elizabeth North is coming from, but whatever, I don't like her. So anyway, let's get to Jake's great escape, you guys. Edison shows up and delivered a message that uh, Jake wants help. Does Edison know that Jake and Olivia used to be booze? Because I'm just like, Edison is just all still wrapped up Olivia's finger. Like, she didn't shave it up. She didn't got him beat up. Well, she, I don't think she had anything to do with Jake beating up uh, Edison back in the day or when he got in that car crash. But the fact that he just keep on running to Olivia or whatever. But, hey, she did just save him from her daddy, right? So, um, Edison delivers a message like, hey, Jake needs your help. And Olivia was like, whatever, bye. And then Jake was like, dang, that's messed up or whatever. But Olivia wasn't going to help. And then Huck was like, I think you should reconsider. And Olivia was like, he's going to kill Jake if I help. Like, it's best for me to stay out of it. So Jake or Huck showed Olivia like, look, um, his fiance, daddy dead or daddy dead. You know, that ain't on accident. So, Rowan is making Jake do all this stuff, so I think that you should help him. And she was like, I can't win against him. Um, 
And then Huck was like, they was like, you, they both was like, you know, your daddy got a phrase, you can't take command. But Huck was like, yeah, you can't take command through the back door. You need to get thug life and go straight through the front door. What phrase did he say? Did he say thug? Or hood? I don't know. Whatever phrase he used, I was like, all right, Huck, get out on him. So, y'all, that's exactly what Olivia did. Olivia went right through the front door, literally. She walked through the front door of her daddy's house and was like, yeah, Jake, come on, let's roll. And I was like, that's exactly how you do it. And Ron was like, uh, what you doing here? And she was all calm, had a nice time, like, yeah, I'm just here to get Jake. And he was like, you sound real cool, but I could tell by your tone and your stance that this is not a good look, so what's the deal? She was like, Jake, get up, you're coming with me. And then Rowan pulled out his gun and was like, like, no, he not. And Olivia was like, look, he not going to shoot you. You his son. Let's roll out. And Jake was kind of, um, what do you call it? Hesitant. But she grabbed his hand and told him to come on. But the only thing, oh, then Olivia going to say, this is what we talked about. Because Jake was looking like, girl, what the heck you doing? And, oh, earlier I forgot to say, so Jake and Olivia had met in the parking lot. Was like, all right, I'm going to save you um jake was like olivia's like do you really trust me though i can only save you if you really trust me i was like why is she panhandling him for trust and she was he was like fine i trust you and she was okay with it but the way he said it was all stank so clearly he was all saying and jake probably don't trust her but at the end of he's like i need you to help me whether i trust you or not i know you can do it you know what i'm saying so i understand where jake was coming from so anyway so olivia in front of papa paul was gonna be like this is what we talked about remember but i'm like olivia why you gotta say all that now you're making jake look like a little weenie in front of the daddy like you could have just been like jake is coming with me and made it seem like this is your idea don't throw jake under the bus you know but whatever hey <laughs> it ended up working <laughs> my nap that's my alarm for my nap i see i usually be on a nap right now y'all see i'm doing my scandal review instead so anyway you guys um that was that so y'all jake and olivia just walked on out and like i said Rowan had a gun to jake head and like he was gonna shoot him but then he just pulled the gun back and papa post like gone before i changed my mind so Jake and Olivia walked out the front door and they walked right into the sun. They little dream walking into the sun together. And even when they closed the door, they both was like, oh, like they couldn't believe that it happened. Y'all, that red coat was so hot. I really want that coat, even though it's hot as heck. I don't really need that coat. You know what? I don't know. In LA, they don't really get that hot, but I, I get cold a lot. So I do be wearing sweaters all the time and stuff. So on one hand, I feel like that coat would be too hot for LA. Like what's the coldest it gets in LA? Like 58 degrees? So, on one hand, I don't feel like I need it, but you know, us LA folk, y'all, it'd be one drop of rain, we'd be on like, <laughs> you know, LA folks, our favorite part of winter is watching it on TV, so, <laughs> I don't know, I guess I would just wear it, I guess, those days that it's 58 degrees. Um, so, that was that, you guys, but I'm so glad they, they, they left, you guys, so, boom, Tom and Cyrus, y'all. So Tom went ahead and found out where Michael lived. Cyrus is boo. Um, so Michael then got a little apartment. He then took little Althea with him and got her a little tutor. And they just living life without Cyrus or whatever. So Tom was like, you want me to kill him? <laughs> and Cyrus like, nah, I'm going to just fall back. And she, he was like, I could kill him. Like, I could either make it make him pay for leaving you or I could kill him like and he'll never know what happened and get your daughter back and then everything could be cool and Cyrus was like well you know I ain't put that little girl to bed and I don't know how long I'm glad Cyrus finally admitted that because we ain't know where we ain't been on where little Althea been this whole time so he was she Cyrus was just like look he do take care of the girl he got her, she in school he know how to pack her lunch so hey you know for right now I'm gonna just fall back and Tom you guys Tom he was like no, like, I could kill him, I could bring the daughter back, and me and you could, uh, bring the daughter, like, take care of the daughter, we could get a nanny, he was like, I found a baby one time, I think I know how to take care of babies, and I was rolling, he was so sincere in his eyes, he was like, I found a baby on the train one time, <laughs> that was funny as heck, that reminded me, like, oh, I got one black friend, I know how to take care of it, <laughs> I, I, I like black people, it kind of reminded me of that, but, that was so cute, you guys. And uh, Cyrus was like, nah, I seen Of Mice and Men. I know how that story ends. You guys know that uh, book? It's a movie, too. It's called Of Mice and Men. 
I think the author is R.L. Steinbeck, or I don't know what the initials are, but Steinbeck, you guys. So it's about these two guys in the countries back in the day. And you know how back in the day you used to go from like town to town or like uh, farm to farm just like as a hired hand. So it was one guy who was real like smart and strong, but there was this other guy. He was real strong, but he was dumb and he was special ed. I think his name was Lenny. So Lenny liked to touch stuff. So they would go from town to town getting jobs or whatever. This is long. I'm not going to tell this whole story. But long story short, Lenny would always blow it for the two men because he was always dumb and he would always get caught up. Like he would see a pretty girl, end up snapping her neck, and they would get fired, have to go to another town, get a new identity. He would, I don't know, be petting some animal, kill the animal. Like he just had a fascinate. like he was a strong buff guy and he meant the well because he was nice but his strength just always got the best of him or whatever so i guess that's tom you know he'd be 613 and he a killer so to take to care of some little adopted black girl cyrus is like boy bye but he could tell that hurt uh tom's feelings so he was like look tom me and you are talking about murder openly i've never had that so this is the most freest relationship I've ever had, or most open relationship. He was like, I'll take with what you and I have any day versus a man who know how to pack a lunch good. So that kind of made Tom feel better a little bit. I was like, oh, poor Tom. Especially he was like, I found a baby on a train once. And I was like, how you find a baby on a train? <laughs> but anyway, um, so that was that, you guys. So Melly, let's go to Melly and Fitz, you guys. Melly asked Fitz to, you know, say a few words at her little convention, y'all. She read Fitz's speech and she is pissed off. The speech is all about him. So she go up to him and, you know, she walking like she about to tell him off. Her little side boo, Harrison number two, was like, look, Melly, he going through a lot. Don't poke the bear. She's like, I'm not going to poke the bear. And instantly she walked up to him. What is that speech? Your speech is an abomination. <laughs> and I was rolling. I was like, abomination to the okay so she was like uh yeah your speech is abomination it's all about you uh it's nothing about me in it you you just want to take over this is my day my time and all you want to do is talk about yourself and he was like Melly, calm down I was just running Susan's campaign and I was doing some other stuff. He was like, so I didn't want to talk about how great of a person you are because I feel like they're going to be like, well, you just said that about Susan. So who you lying about? Was you lying then or you lying now? And when Fitz said that, I actually got it. I was like, oh, Olivia taught him something a little bit. I actually was here for his justification. But y'all know Millie was like, no, whatever. You're a whiner. You're a crybaby. F your couch. <laughs> Basically, she was like, you cried the whole time you were president. You're some privileged little snotty white kid who likes to talk about himself all the time. Like, no, you're not about to do this at my campaign. I deserve this. I earned it. I want to be here, unlike you. So, no, you are going to say stuff about me. Like, tell them how good of a person I am and how much I deserve it and I earn it. Like, no, I'm not listening to you. So, I was here for it, y'all. Especially when he, she called him a... Uh, privileged white man i was like come on read him uh, Mary. so yeah so uh fits fell back y'all but y'all even though i'm team millie i was like girl bye you earned it no you didn't you what you've been doing the last eight years eating fried chicken no i'm not i'm gonna take that back because she was eating fried chicken in the white house but that was when her son died so i'm gonna take that one back but no you didn't earn it okay i understand you got a law degree but look at susan ross she was actually like a governor or something or in politics even a little lover a liberty lady she used she had a job she was doing bills and getting bills signed and campaign like those women to me they put in the work to elevate to the white house where they once got to millie like yeah you was a lawyer but your daddy was like rich too wasn't he and you know, you only got this because you were the president's wife. Like, if you was just Millie from the Bronx for real, you wouldn't be presidential candidate right now. So that's why I was like, okay, I'm here for you reading Fitz, especially about his little whiny self, because he was just in the beginning of the episode crying to Abby about how being in the White House is a prison. So I was here for Millie telling him the truth, but I was like, girl, okay, granted, Fitz didn't win fairly, but at the same time, I really don't think it. maybe if you wouldn't have lost your son and maybe if your husband wouldn't have cheated in front of everybody and everybody on your side, you probably wouldn't be there either, girl. So fall back. Um. Anyway, y'all, so boom, Olivia and Fitz 
meet again you guys so now that olivia rescued jake she's gonna put jake on millie's ticket as vice president so she goes to tell fizz like hey i'm gonna tell millie to pick jake and i just want to let you know and she was like sit down and fizz was like sit down he was like i didn't come here to sit down and fizz was like you came here to tell me that your ex-boyfriend is gonna be on my ex-wife campaign and you can't even sit down with me <laughs> So they laughed and they smiled and they had a little cute moment. And Fitz was like, I miss this. And she was like, oh, no. And then he was like, no, I don't mean that. I mean like this, us. And the funny thing is when they chuckled about that little comment, I missed that too. I was like, oh, I do miss them. Like before, like aside from them having sex, they, they were kind of funny because they both serious. They both got these lifestyles where they got to do all these rules. So it was cute when when Millie and Olivia came together to just kind of like shoot the shit a little bit and be normal. So I was like, oh, I kind of miss that side of them too. So long story short, you guys, Fitz ended up talking in cold. He basically let uh, Olivia know in cold, like, look, Abby had a file that said you got an abortion. I read it and I support your decision. I support your right to make a choice with your body, even though you don't need me to give you my permission. I support your choice, even though he kind of passed it out, support your choice for Jake. And he also said something too. Oh, like, you know, Millie just cussed him out, right? And he was like, oh, Millie said that I don't be listening. So if I never not listen to you, like I didn't listen to her, I just want to apologize. And so that was Fitz's way of apologizing. Like, I apologize for trying to make you a stuffy old first lady. That's why you dumped me and I pop. And, you know, I'm cool. I know about the abortion and I'm cool with it. So I kind of like that conversation a little bit. I just like the fact that they were talking in cold, but they both knew what each other meant. Like, he was like, I support your choice. And at first, Olivia was like, but then she kind of got it. You know, like your choice, pro choice, like, like whatever. So that was that. So that was it. Let me get on, y'all. I got to get out of here. Um, so boom, you guys. That was pretty much the main episode. And the last thing is the final candidates of the whole episode, you guys. So Olivia tells Jake or tells Melly to pick Jake. And Jake does or Melly does. And then it comes out who Cyrus is going to pick. You know, Cyrus called David Rose and was like, nah, bye. I'm not picking you. Like I said, I don't get why he even did that. But... When Olivia called Cyrus and confronted Cyrus, she was like, oh, David Rosen was just a pawn to get me to do what you want. So that whole little part, I still don't get, but whatever. David Rosen ain't the vice president. Olivia North gonna say, how did you mess that up? I was like, Elizabeth North ain't no joke. That's so rude, girl. But anyway, because she basically was like, dang, you messed everything up. How did you mess that up? I was like, you're such a bad girlfriend or side chick or smash partner. <laughs> You're still supposed to have support when you're just a smash partner. <laughs> but anyway, you guys, so come to find out, Vargas ended up picking Cyrus as the vice president, you guys. So we got Millie and Jake as the Republican vice president and president nominations. And then we got Vargas. Yeah, you guys, so we have um, Millie and Jake on the Republican side, and then you have... Vargas and Cyrus on the Democrat side, you guys. So we have a woman and a hot guy. And then you have a Mexican candidate with a gay vice president who has a black baby. So political wise, that is a good, good battle. And it's going to be so interesting to see. Like, I don't know if Shonda wrote the part already or is she going to wait to see what happened in our real life election and then pick the winner based off what happens in real life. But We'll see you guys. Um, I thought it was excellent how it all ended. And guess who else thought it was excellent, y'all? Papa Poe. He at home drinking his wine. I it, I have so many notes in my life around. I wrote down the wine that him and Olivia like. And I meant to try it. I don't know why that wine looked so good. And I was drinking my own wine when I was watching it. But I don't know why his wine looked so much better. <laughs> so I got to find that note that I wrote and find that wine, you guys. But Papa Pope at home, like, Olivia, you did it. He was like, that's my girl. And that's where the whole little name of the episode came from. That's my girl. So the only thing that I didn't get, remember when Papa Pope was all mad that Olivia busted in and stole Jake? I was like, so was you pretending to be mad? Because for him to say, that's my girl, and it did all of these flashbacks of him telling Olivia she could run stuff and she could do it and giving her all these pep talks. 
and all he she needed was a push from daddy to be great this this and that and then you know for him to say that's my girl so you would think that he would be mad but then for him to say that's my girl it made it seem like that's what he wanted all along he got jake in there even though jake think that you know he gone or you know that he escaped from papa pope i guess Papa Pope was like, no, I still got you. But, you know, if Cyrus win, he knows Cyrus. So he got some stuff on Cyrus. And if Melly win, he got some stuff on Jake and Olivia. So Papa Pope got a hand in it either way. So he satisfied you guys. I had just said something that I was going to say. Oh, y'all. So Cyrus dumped Tom, y'all. Um, When Cyrus, right before Cyrus announced that he was the vice president, Tom was like, oh, your old boo here. You want me to kill him right now? <laughs> And Cyrus is like, no, like, we got to break up. I'm sorry. And Tom was like, no, like, what you talking about? And he was like, I can't do it no more. I'm getting back with my husband, boy, bye. And I felt so bad for Tom, you guys. So I don't know what that's going to mean for Tom. But I thought Tom was playing anyway. I never thought that Tom was gay for real. And I didn't think that Tom really liked Cyrus. I thought he was probably just doing some B613 stuff. But like I said, when he was sad... The other time earlier when he was going to volunteer to keep the baby. And then he was sad when Cyrus just dumped him like finally now. So I feel bad for Tom. But I don't know. I said this on one of my scandal reviews before you guys. But um, Tom did an interview on After Buzz TV, the actor. And he was like, he was only supposed to do like one or two episodes for Scandal. But like as the storyline thickened and they found a need for him. Now he's a reoccurring cast member. I was like, oh, Lord, bless me with that. You know, <laughs> How about I be an extra that turned into a reoccurring casserole? And Melly. Melly was like, she was supposed to have a, like an episode or two or maybe be reoccurring, but she got bumped up to main cast. So, hey, maybe I'll be a little extra in the background. Now, you know, maybe I could be Harrison number two, uh, boo. <laughs> But anyway, that was it, you guys. So Olivia went to her gladiators after she talked to Cyrus. It's like, all right, I see that Cyrus is the VP, but that's okay. One of us is going to win, and it's going to be me. Y'all, so that was it. Boom. The end of Scandal Season 5. It was so good. I'm here for it. I'm looking forward to next season. As we all know, Olivia or Carrie Washington is pregnant with her second baby. So they shortened next season to 16 episodes so to me that kind of makes it seem like they not gonna include her because that's what they did when she was pregnant the first time so maybe they'll keep hiding her pregnancy and making her hide behind lamps like they did the first time or maybe she will be pregnant on the show for real for real and but because of how far she along in real life like she can't be all busting out at the uterus <laughs> doing the show so i don't know just because they cut it down don't mean she won't be pregnant on the show. But I guess we'll see. And, of course, they was on Jimmy Kimmel and they wouldn't tell him so. But they never do, you guys. Oh, and then there was this one little scene with Jake. I know this is long, you guys. But this is my last scandal for the year. Oh, I guess it come on at the end of the year. So we can talk. Um, Jake, you guys. Jake wasn't about to go out there. He was like, look, we escaped from Papa Pope. I don't need to be vice president. I appreciate that was your way of getting me out. But now that I'm out, now that he let us go, look, I'm about to buy this house in the hood. You can be my baby mama. We can have three kids and we can live happily ever after. Olivia was like, that sounds like a mediocre life to me. She was like, mediocrity is not who I am. I was like, come on now. I like that. I'm going to have to put that on a poster. <laughs> and she was like, no, here's your tie. Put your tie on. You will be vice president and let's roll. And Jake was like, oh, I went from being your daddy's bitch to being your bitch. I was like, oh, yeah, it's, it's always been like that. You just now noticing that. <laughs> so at first he wasn't going to do it, but she just looked at him, gave him a look like one of them Papa Pope looks, one of them command looks like, uh, put your tie on. So he put the tie on and he go out there and he do his little presidential way, vice presidential way. So it's all in, you guys. So that was it. I'm looking forward to see what's going to happen, you guys. So that was it, I think, you guys. So that was Scandal Season 5 finale. All right, you guys. It's Friday. My little favorite day of the week. I'm going to go swimming today. I haven't been swimming in like a month or so. Not that I could really swim. I just, I could swim, but I only swim. <laughs> swim. <laughs> I still only swim in the shallow end, but I still do a whole like laps back and forth, but just on the shallow end. So that counts as swimming. But I just get nervous about swimming where my feet can't touch the ground if I get tired. 
So that's what makes me say I can't swim, but I guess I can swim. But I don't think I could swim in the ocean or I'm so scared to swim like lap to lap on the part that don't where my feet can't touch the ground. So I'm gonna give me a little exercise in today for the weekend. I'm gonna try to not blow it. I seem to always blow it on my diet on the weekends. At work, like because I prepackage my breakfast, lunch, and dinner or afternoon snack, I can follow it. But on the weekends, you know how you be running the streets, you be shopping, you stop at the mall. I didn't been to a baby shower. I went to a concert. I went to, you know, so you just eat when you're in the streets. But maybe I should start packing stuff even for when I do events. But it's just too much work. So I'm going to try not to blow it this weekend because, like I said, I lost a little 22 pounds. But now I'm stuck. Like, I've been stuck at this 22 pounds for, like, almost a month, if not longer, you know. So... I don't know, I guess I need to step my game up, my exercise game up a little bit. And I probably need to stop drinking so much. <laughs> Maybe I should get some uh, skinny girl mixers, but that stuff don't taste good to me. I like all the fat in my drinks. <laughs> so I don't know, but hey, I guess I'll get it together. But I don't know, not that I need to get all extra skinny. I just didn't want to be all walking up the stairs tired so now that I don't get so tired when I walk up the stairs to my desk <laughs> maybe I could just cool it and stay here <laughs> so anyway you guys that's it enjoy your weekend I know it's Friday the 13th that don't mean nothing to me but if it means something to you uh don't wear black don't step on a crack don't break your mama's back don't do something with a black cat don't walk under a ladder <laughs> That's usually the stuff that I remember from being a kid. It's probably way more stuff, but that's the stuff that I remember we used to say. Um, yeah, so that's it, you guys. All right, you guys. Enjoy your the rest of your day and enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I guess I will see you again soon. All right, bye. Hey, what's up, you guys? I just came on to say hey real quick, y'all. So I'm so smelling myself right now, as my granny would say. <laughs> You guys see that uh, Tasha Smith tweeted me. I was like, oh, I feel like a little celebrity. <laughs> like last week or two weeks ago, Diddy tweeted me the love of my life. And now today, Tasha Smith tweeted me. Um, you know, Empire was yesterday. So I had tweeted, you know how uh, Tasha Smith had showed up to the Aces really late. And I was just like... Oh, I'll, oh, late and drunk. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'll take one of whatever Tasha had. Or I said, I'll take one of whatever Carol had. And I just tagged Tasha Smith or whatever. And then she just retweeted it and typed LOL. So I thought that was cute. So <laughs> I feel all popular today. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to, guy, wanted to tell you guys that how I'm popular today. So good for me right all right you guys anyway i'll see you guys in a bit all right bye